As a parole agent, every case that I've experienced uh, that was a success case, uh, I was able to effectively communicate with the families as well as the parolee and reach them and, and work with them and uh, nurture them and uh, bring them to a point of success. Um, I think building trust also is also very important in this goal. Uh, they need to trust us not to lock them up and we need to trust them not to violate. I also believe education is uh, very important. We need to bridge the gap of education. Uh, we need to engage them in, and excite them in, in, um, in learning and we need to also excite them in uh, learning about work and we need to excite them about staying clean. Um, we also need to educate our agents as well. We need to provide better training and, and, uh, and how to communicate with, uh, with parolees and, and uh, how to effectively deal with them in the community. Uh, we also need to train and, and teach uh, the community itself on what our mission is and what our mission is not. Um, I also believe in liaisoning with uh, local leaders here in San Francisco as well as the city leadership and uh, the city council, the board of supervisors, and uh, community action groups. And together we can effectively manage the parolee population in their neighborhoods. We can together identify issues and collaboratively work towards a successful resolution. Thank you. Great, Michael, thank you. You're so right about that communication and working with the parole agents and the parolees together. Our next presenter is uh, Judge Herbert Donaldson. And Judge Donaldson has worked in the San Francisco courts since 1983. And he purportedly retired in 1999, but he's been uh, sitting on special assignments since then. And in 2003, um, he initiated the Behavioral Health Court, which has been highly successful in San Francisco and still going today. He's a big advocate for the alternative collaborative courts and he has, has agreed to volunteer and work with our reentry council on what we're calling the second chance court, which will be um, a court for parole violators in lieu of going back to prison and jail for a nonviolent technical offense, they would be allowed to go into a reentry court. It's a big initiative for us. Um, prior to that, Judge Donaldson was a proprietor of the coffee business. Uh, and he was also um, a practicing attorney and served honorably in the United States Navy. Judge Donaldson, um, based on your experience with the alternative courts, what lessons can you teach us um, about an emerging second chance court and what are the crucial design elements that we need to make sure we incorporate? Well, before I answer that question, first let me say that we are sending far too many people who have been convicted of nonviolent crimes to state prison. And, and we, are, we are sending far too many people who have been convicted of nonviolent crimes and are mentally ill to state prison where they are poorly equipped to treat them. I, I worked with the Behavioral Health Court in San Francisco for three years. Uh, and one of the things which I recognized then and now, and I think must be true of any re-entry or second chance court, is that there has to be a team effort. In other words, there has to be collaboration between all the people who are connected with that court and the agencies that are giving support to that court. There must be a strong mental health component. We, were, we are lucky in San Francisco to have citywide uh, be our mental health component as one of our resource people. And, and I want to recognize Kathleen Connolly, who is here somewhere and who works at citywide. I want to also recognize Jennifer Johnson, who's put in three plus years working part time and managed to uh, represent the, well, some 60 to 100 people at a time in the behavioral health court. That takes a lot of work. 
Now, we have to recognize in a court such as is proposed here, there has to be a common goal. And the common goal is certainly rehabilitation and the public safety. So there have to be guidelines as to who is, uh, who is entered into the court. Uh, but these guidelines should also be flexible. They shouldn't be uh, hard and fast because there are always exceptions because in any court such as this, we're dealing with people and each person is an individual. We have to serve everybody's interest and therefore the usual court adversarial position has to be abandoned. It has to be a cooperative uh, matter. Although somebody representing the people, in, our, in the case of BHC, it's the, it's the uh, district attorney, uh, and of course, in somebody representing the people who are in that court, uh, mostly it's, it's uh, Jennifer Johnson with, from the Public Defender's Office, they have to learn to work together and not to work at uh, opposite uh, ends. And I have to say they very successfully have learned how to do that. Additionally, the person who leads that court has to learn to listen to the, the people who are part of that team. Uh, it's not a matter in which the judge who is in that court uh, can be arbitrary. It has to be a cooperative effort so that there is general consensus. A, a court such as is proposed here has to have something to offer to the individual who is going to be part of that court. In other words, they have to receive something because, of course, it'll be voluntary. Uh, a parolee doesn't have to accept something like this. They have to be convinced that they're going to get something out of it, and they will get something out of it. They're going to, they're going to get some stability. They're going to get some guidance, and uh, for a while they'll be coming back to court probably every couple of weeks, not for punitive reasons, but just to ascertain how they are progressing. In other words, they have to know that they are actually cared for. There, there has to be some reward for, for being in this court, and I think that can be worked out. One of the rewards, of course, is that they're going to be, have access to a lot of the agencies that they wouldn't know how to access on their own. It's, it's one thing to, to give a list of agencies that they can apply to, but you and I, the average person, when we go to some of these agencies, we don't know what to do, and, and we don't know how to answer their questions. We don't even know how to find them. And how do we expect people who've been in prison to suddenly be aware of where all these people are located, what they should be asking for, and, and what they should be saying, these magic words, to get what they need? Uh, in other words, we all have to collaborate because we all have the same goal, that is, we want people in this court to succeed. Now, we can't expect 100% success. We don't have 100% success in our BHC, but you will be amazed at how people will react if they are treated right, if they're treated like individuals, like they're like they are a person of worth. Uh, that's, my, that's a preliminary suggestion. You know, I could talk for an hour on, on what this kind of court should have, but I'll, I'll suffice at that. Well, thank you. Appreciate it, guys.